So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the finer points of creating a table in Microsoft Word 2011. So I have a general layout here for my paper, and let's say between these two paragraphs, I want to insert a table. So to do that, I'm going to first start by going to Tables in the ribbon and choosing New from the drop-down menu. Okay, so I'm going to select however large I want the table to be. So let's say that I want it to be three, uh, four by three. So I click that and it gives me a table. Now, a couple of things to note about this table. First and foremost, this table currently inherits the formatting of our document as a whole, meaning this table is double spaced just like the rest of my document was. And I don't want that. So the first thing I'm going to do when working with this table is I'm going to come over here to the Home tab and I'm going to click on this icon under Paragraph to set the line spacing to 1. Now you'll notice that what that did effectively was set my table to have a single line spacing which kind of condensed it in terms of its vertical orientation. If I want to change the relative height of all of the cells, I have two options. I can either go to individual rows and adjust the height. As you'll see, you get this double arrow up and down. But the problem with that is if I adjust a single row, it causes just that row to adjust in regards to its size. And that's okay if you're working with a single row that you want to change. But that's not what I want to do here. I want to change the height of the whole table. So to do that, I'm going to go to the lower right-hand corner to get this symbol. I'm going to click and drag down. And what that effectively does is change the size of all of my cells in the table. And that makes them all even in regards to the relative size. Okay, so I now have evenly sized cells in terms of their height on all three rows. Now what I want to do is I want to start adding text. So I'm going to start this by titling each of these rows with their relative um, titles. Okay, So this is going to be for my temperature exercise where I've got 0 degrees Celsius uh, and the glucose produced in that in milligrams per deciliter. Okay, now I'm going to just copy and paste this into these. And you'll recall we did more than just 25, 0, and 40 for our degrees Celsius. We also had 60, 80, and 100. So what I've done is I've started making a table and then realized midway through making it that I need more rows. So this is an easy fix. I'm going to select the last row of my table, or I'm sorry, the last column of my table. I've decided I want to add additional columns, so I'm going to select the last column, and I'm going to come over here to Table Layout. And the cool thing is here with rows and columns, you actually get the option of either deleting rows, adding rows above or below, and then adding columns to the left or right. So I'm currently in my final column here, and I want to add three more columns to the right. So I'm just going to click this three more times. One, two, three. And now I have three columns added. Now what you'll notice is that this did not format the column appropriately. So if I want to distribute the columns equally in terms of their relative width, I can simply select all of the columns, come up here and click distribute columns. So again I'll back up Notice unequal width. I select all the columns and then I come here under cell size and I click distribute columns. That gives me nice even sized columns. Now what you'll probably notice right now is none of the formatting that I have is really making this look nice and neat and we'll get there. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste my 40 degrees, change it to 60, change it to 80, and change it to 100. So all I've done now is add extra columns and I've redistributed the columns to have the same width. The next thing I want to do is I realize I don't need this row here. So this row is superfluous. So I'm going to highlight the whole row and I'm going to come up here to rows and columns and I'm going to choose to delete that row. And notice now that my table has gone from being three rows down to just two. All right, so now let's start working with the formatting of our text. So the thing I want to do first is I want to first make all of the text here in my header row bold. So I'm just going to highlight all my cells. I'm going to press Command and B at the same time, 
and that bolds everything. You also could have accomplished this by highlighting everything, coming here to home, and simply clicking on the B under your font formatting. The other thing that I want to do is I want to align everything in these cells, center it both vertically and horizontally. So to do that, I'm going to come to Table Layout, and I'm going to come over here under Alignment. I'm going to click Align, and I'm going to drag down to where it says Center. I'm going to click Center. Notice now that everything is neatly aligned. Okay, I'm going to add one more thing to my time. I'm going to add the fact that it's in minutes. Okay. And now I'm ready to start inputting data. So my time point was in 10 minutes. Let's say my glucose content at 0 degrees Celsius was 100 milligrams per deciliter. Let's say I had 250 at 25, 500 at 440, 1000 at 60. Let's say I dropped back down to 250 at, at 80 degrees, and then I had 0 at 100. Again, if I want to make all of these align properly, in the exact center of the cell, I'm going to come back up to Align and click Center. So this is a pretty darn good looking table at this point, but it's missing something if this is in my scientific paper. It's missing some kind of legend. Now a lot of students try and make the legend from their paragraphs, and this can be problematic when you start trying to move the table, something I'm going to demonstrate here in a little bit. So what I consider an easier fix than trying to integrate your legend into your paragraphs is to simply use what's known as a text box. So here is my text box right here in the home ribbon. Okay, so if I click on the home ribbon and come over here to insert, it gives me the option of inserting a text box. I'm going to just click on it to select it, and it gives me this reticule to use to insert my text box. So I'm just going to click and drag the text box I want to integrate. This might mess up my table initially, but don't worry, we're going to fix it. Okay, so I'm just going to type figure one. Okay, now notice it did mess up my table, but I'm going to fix that here by selecting the text box, and then I'm going to come up here to the ribbon and click format. And the thing I want to work with is how to wrap the text around my text box. So what I'm going to do is click here, and I'm going to choose in front of text. And notice now that my text box can be moved anywhere in the document, and it doesn't mess up the text, it just lays over it. Now, you'll notice right now when I'm moving the text box, it kind of moves with very, very jerky movements. Okay? If I want to eliminate that to make it move smoothly, I just hold the command key, which is just to the left or to the right of the space bar, along with the mouse. Okay, so now as I move it, it moves very smoothly. If I release the command key now, you'll notice it moves jerkily again. Okay, so I'm going to align it just to the left there. And I need to resize it, so I'm going to drag it out a little bit. And again, I can make it smoothly resized by holding the command key. So I'm going to increase the height a little bit, and I'm going to increase the width to match that of my table. Okay, so now I can add in whatever I want to. Remember, this should be bold, so I'm going to bold it and I'm going to type determining optimal temperature of lactase. Okay, so now I've got a table with a nice figure legend that accompanies it done and accomplished by a text box. So let's say that for some reason I decided that this was not actually the place I wanted to put my table. Okay, so you're going to try and move your table. Now this can be kind of difficult and kind of tricky. Notice when I'm moving it here, it can kind of push the text around, it can kind of move. If you're going to move your table, I honestly suggest that rather than trying to do that, trying to grab it and drag it, the simplest way to move a table is to make sure that you click on this tab here with the arrow in four directions to select the whole table and then just cut the table out of the document. So to do that I'm going to press Command X. Then if I want to go and integrate the table anywhere else, like right after this paragraph, I simply go to the next line here and I press Command V to paste it. And there's my table. If I want to move my text box, Command X, I'm going to delete this line. Notice the table moves up with everything. And Command V, here's my text box. I'm going to drag it back down. Okay, and voila. Alright, so this is the tutorial on tables.
I hope you found it helpful.